Here's a page of figure studies and gouache. I think it's really useful stuff. Uh, some of these are pretty quick, about a couple minutes up to ones I spent a little more time on. The priority's the same as for our regular drawings. Action first, then proportion, then volume, and detail if you have enough time to get to it. On a drawing like this, I won't have time to really get to detail, really just mostly the action and proportion. But I wanna also talk to you about mixing up the colors that I'm using, so let's take a look at that. This is the palette I use for gouache, for working from the figure. And one of the first things you might notice is I actually painted this down a little bit gray to match the gray that I tend to work on. That way, the way the gouache looks here would be a better predictor for the way it's going to look on the paper. Um, I'm using some gouache colors from the tube up here and some ones I mixed up with a palette knife and then put into these empty half pans on the bottom. So the colors I have up here are, I have a black, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow light, a dark mixed gray that I mixed up, a lighter mixed gray I mixed up to dry down roughly to the color of the paper I'm using, titanium white, and the bottom are flesh tones. So the flesh tones I have here, I actually based on colors that I mixed in oil since I paint from the figure in oil a lot. So I took the colors my flesh tone notes from there, which are basically a dark, a really dark dark with no white in it, a pretty dark dark. Then I start coming into transition tones with a little bit of warm and cool in the shadows uh, and up into lights and highlights. So same thing in gouache. And one of the tricky things to remember about gouache that gouache will remind you of is it changes a great deal wet to dry. So if I just take water on this brush and get it wet, you'll see by the time I'm done talking, that will have dried down a lot darker. So this dark color has no white in it. Then I have like a warm and cool shadow. These two are a little bit redundant, a little bit close to each other. And it's probably just from me matching a gouache that's dry with a gouache that's wet. And they were close enough that I just use both of them since I'm using uh, nice gouache. And I could probably get rid of one of these. And I have a transition tone into light and a couple of highlight colors. This was originally my highlight color, but it wasn't quite light enough because as you can see, the gouache already dried down a little bit darker. Um, so I remixed a really bright highlight. So these are the colors I use. I'm gonna do a demonstration from you where I, I mix from much fewer colors. For, this, for most of these, I'm mixing cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow light, cobalt blue, and white. And these brightest ones have no uh, blue in them because the white mixes like a cold color. It acts very much like a blue. So I'm going to do a demonstration for you while I, I mix flesh tones and do a little drawing out of just the cobalt blue, cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow light, and white. So normally I would mix on a separate palette. For this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and put the paint and use the same page as the palette that I'm using for the drawing just to make it so that you can see uh, I'll mix the colors for you from scratch. These are the colors I'm going to use to mix. So I've got cadmium yellow light, cobalt blue, cadmium red medium, and white. And I'm using Schmincke gouache, which is actually really expensive, but I think M. Graham makes a much less expensive brand. Um, but the primaries, you can make a lot of colors out of a few colors. And these colors I find really useful for flesh tones. All right, so now I have my colors laid out. I have cobalt blue and the white on the cold side, kind of dark to light. Red is a little darker than the yellow, so cad red medium and cad yellow light. So I want to start by mixing a, having a mixed dark. So we just mix these together. Maybe a mixed warm dark. It's a little purpley. That's probably okay. I'm gonna work dark to light, pretty much. And again, this is where the, the gray ground of the paper is very useful. There, that's a pretty good color to start mapping things out with. So I mapped it out a little bit in pencil, which I think is good to do on a long, uh, longer gouache drawing. On some of those quick examples I was showing you, I don't really um, map it out that that much, so maybe I should do a 
a separate one for that, but her hair, her hair's a really dark dark. And you'll see the gouache goes down a little light and then it comes out, oh, it comes out a little darker. And again, I would use nor normally a separate palette, but to make this a color mixing demonstration as well as a uh, as well as a gouache figure demonstration, I put the gouache on the same paper. So I want to start with the big things. This drawing looks okay. I already kind of checked it a little bit. So, but that's really important again. We want to have on these longer drawings, you still want to have action first then proportion proportion then volume and maybe we'll get to detail i don't know we'll see so i'm gonna just map out where she's the very darkest almost where there's a line so Right here where her arms against her rib cage is a darker dark than the shadows on her skin. And I just want to map things out. And one of the beauties of gouache is that uh, since it re-wets, you can correct it pretty easily. So if let's say I let's say I make a mistake and I do something I didn't mean to. Right, let's say our right, let's say I do something I don't want, I can get the take a little piece of paper towel and get it wet, and it'll come right back off. So uh, so it's a very forgiving medium like that. Let me start. I'm just gonna lay in um, the shadows first, right? So I have a little bit of a map. The gouache rewets on the paper as well, so that's why I'm using the paper as the as the palette, so you can see it. And actually, I should probably use as large a brush as I can control for this, because most of the shadows aren't that dark. So once I get the darkest darks laid in. Her hair is pretty dark. So I have more colors of gouache than this. If I wanted to make her hair a darker dark, I could get a darker, like a darker blue, and ultramarine is darker than this cobalt. That would make it go a little darker. But really, I just want to map it first. Right, map out the feet, and then I want to use as large a brush as I can control generally. So this is pretty big for the size drawing I'm doing. I'm going to come down a little bit. I'm going to start adding a little tiny bit of white into the, into the paint, and really quickly it goes a lot colder. You notice as soon as the white went in there, it really tipped over to the cold. So that's what I mean when I say white is a cold color. It really mixes like a very cold color. So I just want to estimate what I think a good shadow color would be. So we'll just test it. That looks a little too red. So that's the advantage of really having the primaries on here. If something's too red, I can calm it down with these other two. If something's too yellow, the opposite of yellow is violet, so the red and the blue would calm it down. If it's too blue, I could use orange, which is red and yellow, to calm it down. So that's why I put them out like this, to really um, explain about color mixing. This looks a little... So that looked a little yellow now. So I'll go back up here. And you can see why I ended up just mixing a big pile, right? Because... Um, 
mixing color slows me down a lot with the drawing, but uh, I wanted to include it in this demonstration because I think it's really valuable. There we go, that looks decent. So now I'm just gonna lay in all the shadows I see. And I wanna be very careful for, this shadow is pretty warm actually. So here where her chin is facing down into light coming off of her shoulder, that's going to be a very warm shadow. Again, where you have, um, let's say I take my hand here and I put my other hand under it, it warms up the shadows. Like the lights, the, the shadows warm up a lot when I do that. So the same thing is gonna happen with the uh, with the model, of course. So I just wanna lay in a big shadow where I have it. And again, that's maybe a little bit warm for some of it. So I'll just add a little bit of blue to cool off the shadow. So remember the shadows take on the color of what they're facing into. Since the model's facing into the sort of neutral surround, it tends to take on some of that uh, neutral, it tends to go a little bit cooler. So the shadows are a little bit cooler facing out into the room and a little warmer facing down into skin. So I use my darker one again. And I'm using a pretty big brush because I want to get things laid down as quickly as possible. So I only have a couple of brushes. I'm using these Filbert shapes because I think they're, again, a good shape of brush for something organic like a, like a person. Right, a flat brush is better maybe for architecture. This is where having a metal palette, this paper is absorbing the gouache a little bit, so it's not really helping me use it as a palette, but I really wanted to make sure that you had the um, colors I'm mixing in front of you. So just kind of reiterating some of these darks. So now as I start to come up into some mid-tones, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just I'm just gonna mix all these primaries, but maybe that's too much blue. Because as I start to add more white, it cools it off a lot. I might even spritz this squash to keep it wet. See, look how cold, like that's a ridiculous color for skin. It's way too green. So if it's too green, I'm gonna add red. If it's too red, I could add green by mixing green with yellow and blue. So it does make it really useful. So that looks like a decent transition tone to start coming up out of the darks. So I'm just gonna put it next to all the dark edges because I can also work into those dark edges and soften them a little bit, like, uh, like skin, right? We have a lot of soft edges on us. We don't have a lot, of, a lot of hard, boxy edges. So. Now I'm starting to come up into the mid-tones. And I find it useful actually to kind of overstate up into the next value. Like you, you see how much darker this is when it's dry. Like this is it wet and that is the gouache dry. So that's a big difference. So I really want to uh, take that into account and I'm gonna pull some of this up into the next value, so. Let's add more. Let's see if we can come up to more of a, start to come up into the lights. That's way too warm. Uh, 
That's kind of reasonable. There we go. That's a little bit too hot and orange. So if it's too orange, I'm gonna touch the blue. But at this point, it has enough white in it that that blue is gonna be, white is really, again, cold color. So when I touch the blue, I don't want that much of it. So I'm slowly working my way up into the lights. And I got a big brush, so I'm just gonna kind of pull it into that previous value. And her skin's not that, it's drying down really yellow. So if it's too yellow, I'm gonna add a little bit of violet. If it's too much of this, I'll add in the red and blue to violet a little bit, maybe lighten it up some more. That actually looks a little more reasonable. So the great thing about gouache, I can keep recovering it and it keeps mixing into what I had before. So if the color's a little off, I can go over it with, a, with more of the color that I mix correctly and it can nudge it gradually into being what I want it to be. So that's actually more of a lit plane. So I really want to keep the plane break clear as I'm mixing these colors, where she goes from day to night, right? The light's coming from this direction, top right, so I want to keep things consistent. Right, and again, you'll see the gouache is drying down and um, darkening quite a bit as it dries. So that's just something you have to get used to. And it's also why it's good, like when I have these mixed up, they're gonna end up being pretty good color notes. Except um, when, if I remixed wet gouache to match them, they would be too, uh, too dark. So as I come up into highlight and, and really brightly lit skin, I am using the cold color, the cold property of the white to, um, for the coolness of the tone. I have, I've only added in this color, it only has red, yellow, and white in it. Since the white is cold, it, uh, I really don't need that much of it. It's really brightly lit behind there. So this looks, the thing about gouache is right when you're putting it on, it looks like it's way too light. It looks kind of like it's raging out of control. But as it dries down, that big wet to dry difference is, is gonna help keep things calm. And I can mix it up into the one above. If I think it's too, if I think it's too much, I can always tone it down a little bit. So actually, see this is drying down not too light. So I'm gonna go ahead and over and put it everywhere. Not everywhere, but everywhere where I want things to be coming into that um, lighter value. that's actually a pretty good lit uh, skin value below the brightest part. Now where I have little areas like this that look a little hard edged, kind of boxy, 
I can sort of restate it. And my darks kind of got a little too transparent. I could even maybe take another shot at reiterating some of those darks because I didn't really... So if your gouache uh, dries out a little bit, you could always just spritz it or even wet it with uh, a brush and get it wet because it does, it does re-wet even if it dries out. So that's way too warm, but maybe even that, that color isn't what I wanted to, to mix up. Maybe I have a couple of notes that are really warm that that could be useful for. Really, I was trying to mix a shadow color, so that's a very warm shadow color. But I do have a couple places like the bottom of the jaw where it's like that. Oh, it's too sad that way. There we go. Um, that looks like a very uh, hot shadow. So I'm going to clean my brush out and go back into these mid-tones with a bigger brush. There, that's better. Still a little warm, a little orange. So the gouache, since it re-wets, it's okay to put plenty of it on, but you definitely want to keep your order that you're working very logical. Dark to light's a really um, sensible way to work these gouache drawings up. See, I can even kind of come back into some of these edges to calm them down a little bit. Now, as I start to get up into highlight color, I really only want the warm colors in here. So that is the upshot. Like now, I, at this point, I have most of the colors on that I'm gonna need. So I might speed this up and try and uh, work on a little bit more. But um, the upshot is, you know, this colors up here have no white in them. As I add white, I'm compensating for the coldness of the white with the warm colors over here. So this color doesn't have any blue in it since the white's already pretty cold. Um, now it's going to be just a question of since the, the foundation is here, the lights and darks are pretty clear. I have the action. My proportion looks okay. I have a little bit of volume because I have the plane break. So maybe I'll try and get to a little bit of detail. So the word action got cut off at the top of the page there, but you know that that's what's organizing the volumes. So as I am working my way through this again, I'm reiterating the darks, trying to soften up those edges into the lights reiterating the lights as well and you can really see on the time lapse how much gouache changes wet to dry despite that it's a very useful material and you can get good flesh tones out of it i could have used a little bit darker dark but i wanted to show you, you could do with this limited palette let's look at some quick drawings with gouache with a palette i premix so i'm just throwing in the gesture like i would with a dry material head spine rib cage pelvis weight bearing leg up to the arms throwing in the shadow on her and then going back in and reiterating the lights. So I really, I just have time for the gesture and the plane break where she goes from day to night. So really action and volume is all I have time for on these quick ones. And you can also see why on these quick ones, the pre-mix gouache is so useful. I can make these decisions really quickly. So I think gouache is great stuff and I hope that you'll enjoy it.